Hello, and welcome back to Many Adventures Mini. So, this week, um, I decided that I wanted to try painting some 3D printed scatter terrain. Uh, all the stuff I'm painting today, I got from Artisans Guild stuff, either through their Amazon's Kickstarter or some of the more recent stuff they've been putting out. But uh, scatter terrain is something that I don't have very much of, but is incredibly useful for both D&D uh, &D and Wargaming. And so I thought it would be cool to paint some up. However, it most scatter is so simple that it's not really worth dedicating an entire video to. So this time I'm doing just a whole medley of different scatter options. Um, and also stay tuned to the end where I'm going to be announcing the winner of our giveaway from last week to win that cool skeleton knight. Uh, should be fun. I'll tell you at the end of the video. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and jump in and I'll show you the scatter terrain that I decided to paint this week. Alright, so here are our pre-images of the scatter terrain that we're going to be painting today. Uh, all of the scatter here is printed on my Anycubic Photon S using the Yuligo Gray Resin. Uh, all the sculpts come from the Artisans Guild. I'll put a link down to their Patreon down below. Uh, the majority of the sculpts are from their Amazon's Kickstarter that they completed at the end of last year. And uh, the last one uh, is the Sacred Well. Uh, this sculpt here. It's the Sacred Well from their elf set from January. Uh, they reached a patron goal, which they stated they would start adding little bits of scatter terrain into their monthly sets, which kind of is what inspired me to try and do this little video here. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to get scatter terrain. Uh, you can 3D print it like I've done here. Uh, there is also uh, molded plastics that you can buy traditionally, like you do with a lot of traditional miniature buying. You just buy it at the store. WizKids is a decent brand for finding some quick and simple things uh, in that vein. Uh, and you can also craft it yourself and there's a huge community out there on YouTube and elsewhere for tutorials and how-tos and just people asking advice on how to make different things. Uh, and not one is any really better than the other, but there are strengths and weaknesses to the different methodologies that you might use. Uh, I'm going to mostly be focusing on the strengths and weaknesses of 3D printing uh, today, but I'll try and touch on some of the other ones as well. Um, I'll touch a little bit on uh, what I'm painting as I go along as well, just to keep it in the loop and not have it be background. So uh, just st sticking in line with that, I'm using this dark stone through my airbrush just to get a base coat on all the stone stuff that I'm working on. But that's the end of what I'll be using the airbrush for uh, in the video today. So we'll just keep it going from there. Um, but yeah, the, the strengths and weaknesses of the different methodologies for creating and obtaining scatter terrain. Uh, the nice part about buying the scatter terrain, like from a WizKids brand, is you, you usually get a lot of repeatability and uh, they're decent quality uh, depending on where you're buying them from. I, I got a reasonably good quality from a few of the WizKids stuff that I have purchased in the past. And uh, there's very low effort to it. You usually have to paint it a little bit, but that's about it. Uh, uh, the, the main downside to purchasing your scatter terrain is cost, because that does add up. If you want to like fill a tavern with tables or something like that, like uh, I think a couple of tables from WizKids is something like five bucks for one or two tables. So if you need like ten tables, that adds up pretty quickly, and that's not always fun. So th there's definitely that going on. Uh, next, you've got crafting. Uh, the main advantage to crafting your scatter terrain is total control. The only thing holding you back is your skill level and knowledge of materials and how to make them work for you. Other than that, you can literally create anything and everything you need right there with your hands, exactly to the scale you might need it, and however you, you want it, and you can kind of edit and work on it as you're going along to get exactly what you need. 
Uh, the downside to crafted terrain, it's it's very tedious. Uh, if you want to repeat something, like uh, these bedrolls that I'm painting in the background is a great example. They're very simple, and you could totally craft something like this. But uh, again, saying you need maybe like 30 of them to put together like this cool bandit camp or something like that, that is tedious as hell to make that many of basically the same thing. And you might be able to do some variations as you're going through and you'll have some truly unique sets of bedrolls, but it's boring and tedious and uh, I, I'd say downright soul crushing in order to try and do that. Uh, on the flip side, it's also cheap and because typically raw materials for that kind of thing are relatively inexpensive. Oftentimes you have a little bit of an expensive like upfront cost to buy materials, but then the materials that you've bought will last you through dozens and dozens of projects without running out, so the end result is pretty inexpensive. Uh, and then finally, you've got uh, 3D printing. Uh, well, 3D printing, uh, you, you've, you've got the initial cost to get in, which is not cheap. Uh, a printer and materials is not necessarily the cheapest thing in the world to get and get going, but assuming you get past that hurdle and you're working with it, uh, an individual piece of scatter is definitely cheaper than what you would uh, get purchasing it, though I'd say it's probably a little bit more expensive than the equivalent spent in materials for crafting, just because those crafting materials are so cheap in the amounts that you tend to buy them. So as far as cost goes, 3D printing, uh, I'd say it's about in the middle. Uh, it's not super expensive, but it's not a, also what I would call cheap. Um, but similar to purchase scatter terrain, it's also very good for uh, getting repeatability. You, you get the same thing uh, relatively every time. Uh, all 3D printers have a, like a small variance where it gets like a little bit shrinkage here and there, so uh, you can't necessarily guarantee it's 100% exactly the same, and you might have some random failure and whatnot. So. There, there's that, but if you wanted to do something like uh, like I was showing with those bed rolls, or if you wanted like a little wall section that you could have be modular, or something like a bookcase to put together like a neat like li uh, library setup, uh, you could get that going with uh, very little effort and get as many as you need without having to worry about how much stock there might be or needing to uh, plan ahead to buy however many you need. You just keep printing until you get the amount that you need and stop there. Uh, Post-processing for this is like not all that much. It's not as much as you'd have to do for just working on crafting it. So getting your original work done on this is relatively uh, simple. Uh, painting, I'd say, is roughly equal for all three different things. It depends on uh, what materials you use if you're crafting, because some crafting materials are more accepting of paint than others, so I'd say handcrafted stuff can be a little bit more difficult to paint, but that's not a guarantee. So overall I find like these 3D printed scatter pieces are just, they they come out on top overall for me. As I said, they're not overly expensive, even if they're not uh, necessarily super cheap. I get the repeatability. Um, and with some time and effort spent learning how to use the programs, you can model and sculpt your own, which gives you the same level of creative freedom, and I'd argue possibly more creative freedom, than you get with the crafting. Uh, it's a completely separate skill set there, but even not counting that, there's tons of information and free stuff available online and cheap stuff uh, like the stuff that I got here from the Artisans Guild uh, overall for everything that I pay for the sets that I get this is really inexpensive and very very affordable and I get some really cool looking pieces and I found that these resins they paint very well uh, especially this Yulagu Mars is not too brittle uh, but very firm so that I get something that feels just like the kind of plastic I might get out of something like a wargaming plastic miniature. Something that's durable enough to get knocked around a table a little bit without me worrying too much that it might break something and everything going on with that. So uh, overall, I, I think this 3D printing scatter is my favorite way to go. 
and I'll probably keep working with this uh, in the future. Just trying to get everything that I want. <laughs> there, there's a lot of scatter that I want. Uh, I am hoping to use it to help create like little city sets and dungeon sets just to flesh out my different setups for wargaming and D&D just because that's what Scatter is there for. It's not meant to be the center of attention, it's kind of an accent to help make everything else fill out more. Uh, the Scatter Terrain is one of those things because I'm I'm a very visual person when I play D&D. D&D can definitely be played completely theater of the mind without any assistance whatsoever and that works fine for some people, but I'm a very visual person, and adding just a little bit goes a long way. So some nice looking dungeon tiles and some good miniatures really throws me into an encounter and gets me going. But if you just have like a, an empty room or something like that, the tendency is that players will, players and monsters will just uh, walk up to each other and start swinging dice at each other back and forth. And if you've got a good narrative uh, DM that is good at uh, keeping that interesting, you can totally work with that. But if you have interesting scatter terrain, something that goes around and gives things for players to interact with that you don't have to outright tell them is there or something like that, you get some much more interesting interactions. Uh, players will often go out of their way to try and interact with the scatter terrain and it gives you some more interesting stuff. Just something as simple as throwing a rock in. Somebody will probably go behind it to get cover from some archers or something like that. Uh, trees, people will climb them to get uh, cover and uh, height advantage and things like that. Uh, the list goes on and on. So I'm really looking forward to trying to get more and more scattered like this built up so I can use it for every occasion hopefully uh, I'm gonna be trying to focus the most as I can on pieces that have a wide amount of usefulness uh, less niche things that I can only use a few times and more things that will uh, be at home in as many sort of situations as possible which is kind of why I'm doing these uh, as I'm showing you it's like that sacred well is a little bit more niche I don't know how many uses I can get out of that but here we've got like an altar Everybody needs an altar. I can reuse an altar several times without it really getting all that boring and the details don't matter all that much. And something like a, a, a rune stone, I could potentially get quite a good amount of uses out of something like that. Uh, and this sacred well, I could turn an entire adventure out of just that little piece of scatter terrain. So uh, all these different things have stories and they help with the visual identity of a game, whether whether it's a DD and d game or even just like a war game where you're setting up your specific scenario and if you want it to look realistic and have fun with it. So it's just a lot of fun like that. Uh, it, they add so much to a game without doing all that much. And as I said, uh, I think the 3D printed is my favorite, though the other methodologies for getting your scatter terrain do definitely have their merits. Uh, this is probably going to be my favorite way to do it for a while. Uh, and I'm also hoping to start trying to learn how to do some sculpting in Blender. I've gotten some tools to help me learn how to do that. So also let me know if you're interested in uh, watching me bumble my way through and try uh, making some things. Uh, it's something I wanted to do. I'm thinking about maybe trying to set up some like a sculpting stream or something like that for me to figure out what I'm doing. But here's the final images from these little bits of scatter. I may need to go over them again with more matte as some of the crevices still have some of my shiny homemade wash in the crevices. I need another blast to get all the matte in there. But I'll go ahead and uh, leave you guys with the rest of these. I had a lot of fun putting this together, so I, I hope you have get as much of a kick out of it as I did, and I'll talk to you later.
All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, this was kind of a different thing for me this time. I had fun uh, doing something that's not characters or monsters or something, uh, just painting and having fun and going at it. So I hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, and getting on to our giveaway winner from last week, the winner for the Skeleton Knight giveaway is uh, YouTube username Lone Therian. Uh, keep an eye out. I'm going to be sending you an email here in the next little bit. Uh, you should hopefully see it within the next day or two uh, for me to get your information so that I can mail you your Skeleton Knight miniature. And with that, I really hope everybody has enjoyed the video. If you do, please uh, give it a like uh, and comment down below if you have anything to tell me about it. If you want to catch more of my content in the future, please hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified when any of my videos are uploaded. And if you want to support me, please go check out the links below to my uh, Patreon page as well as my Etsy store where you can buy some of the stuff that I paint and create. Uh, and if you want to keep up to date with a handful of beside, behind the scenes things and additional notifications, go check out my Facebook page which is also linked in the description below. And with that, I hope to see everybody here again next week.